Check, check. Can you hear me? Okay. Actually, looks like it's working now. Okay. How's everyone doing? This is William Mars for Sim Racing Paddock. And in our latest edition in the Sim Racing uh, History Series, I am looking at uh, GTR2 by Simbin Studios, which is actually the precursor to Sector 3 Studios, the creators of Race Room, as well as Slightly Mad Studios, the creators of Project Cars. So this is definitely an interesting moment in sim racing history. GTR2, if I remember correctly, initially came out in 2004, maybe 2005, and ran on the ISI Motor 1 engine. So it ran on the same engine as F1 Challenge 99 through 02, and was the precursor to R Factor. So looking at this, I just loaded it up, and I know there's Steam version, but you can't really beat the hard physical copy for this. And it's actually a good reason because in the Steam version out of the box, or not out of the box, but out of the download, you don't get Porsche or Ferrari because of licensing reasons in Steam. And in the PC uh, CD version, you do, or DVD version. So it's definitely nice having that physical copy available. So let me just adjust some settings. I believe I have all the controllers configured video we should be able to have pretty solid settings because i'm running on the 1080 uh, uh 1080 so that should work well realism let's turn off auto clutch auto gearbox no auto reverse boom 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 um, there we go Drills off. So one nice thing is even with road racing, there's full course yellows in this. Other sims take note. But yeah, you have full course yellows in a road racing game. You don't see that too often nowadays in simulators. So let's go to the main menu and we'll just do an open practice for the heck of it. But look at the car roster. So this simulated the FIA GT 2003 season and 2004 season. And also single makes if you want, specials. So you could simulate the 24 hours of Spa as well. But yeah, let's look at the 2004 season. You have the Ferrari 550 Marinello, 575 GTC, the Lamborghini Murcielago, Lister Storm, you don't hear about that one often, the Lotus Elise, the Nissan 350Z and GT race car, and then Porsche. In an age be when Gran Turismo, Forza Motorsport were struggling to have Porsche, we had them in uh, a Hodunk PC simulator game. That's pretty awesome, if I say so. And yeah, G3 and G2 classes. So let's take a look. I want to try the GT3 RSR. In the background, you can hear that flat six sound. Hey, Tony and Rikahosu, uh, sorry if I mispronounced your name, Coca-Cola Porsche. That just sounds cool. So for now, I've set this to 500 degrees or 540 degrees of rotation. One of the downsides of older Sims is it didn't actually dynamically adjust your degrees of rotation. So an interesting thing is some, uh, some of these are grayed out by default. So... We can't access all of the tracks. A uh, power and glory mod. I haven't loaded that up yet. Uh, I just installed this this morning. I just thought I was waking up. I saw this in my bookcase. I was like, yeah, I want to test drive this. So uh, Donington Park, one of my favorite British tracks. Uh, let's take that for a spin. So continue. We're good to go, guys. So let's just see. Um, or wait, auto gearbox? Hold on, I accidentally hit something. But man, look at that UI right there. <laughs> totally 19, or totally 2004. So I accidentally hit a button. Let me see if I can fix that. Realism, auto gearbox. 
Spin recovery, let's turn off. Why was there a pit assist? I don't know. Oh, the track's open in Power Glory. Thanks for the heads up. Okay, I have the auto pit going. I can't really change that right now, but I'll look into it. So let's take this for a spin, guys. Oh, nostalgia. Nostalgia, guys. I haven't driven this in years. So you might see less steering on the screen than I'm actually putting in. That's because of uh, this not having like the true one-to-one -one rotation like older sim titles. I think it, there is a way I can adjust the I and I file to do that if I remove the hands. But I, I want this to have a good experience for you guys. Oh man. Feels like my force feedback is off. Uh, I might need to change the settings. Because this is actually, I transferred back to my Ryzen system because I'm doing my Ryzen versus Intel comparison. And I just loaded up my Ryzen system, put my 1080 in here. And, oh, I cut the corner. Okay. Oh, that radio sound actually sounds pretty good. So let me just check something real quick because I'm not getting any force feedback through. So force, um, yeah, force feedback effects off by default. Okay, then. So that should be good. Let's just do full. Let me see if I can figure out why I'm not getting uh, the, or the auto assist there. Flag rules, time scaled weather. I'm not seeing anything auto pit lanes. Could it be the F key? Damage on, spin recovery, stability help, braking help, steering help, anti lock brakes. I don't know. I tried. So let's see how this feels with force feedback now. Oh yeah, much better, much better. I might be clipping a bit though. But yeah, you can feel the weight through the wheel. Yeah. Okay, I'm definitely clipping. Uh, game sound a bit louder. Give me a minute and I'll take a look. So... Alright guys, I need to jump out anyway to adjust the force feedback uh, GTR 3 is coming end of this year I think early 2018 that time frame so definitely exciting for that uh, so desktop audio let me bump that up a bit I need to get my own like external mixer or something but yeah, GTR 3, I'm excited because I think some of the original guys who worked on GTR 2, minus the slightly mad guys, they are going to be working on GTR 3. So yeah, force feedback strength 100, we need to turn that down to like 65, I think. So Large Alama, force feedback clipping, think of it as sort of like a speaker system, where if you have your audio too high, it starts getting distorted and you're losing that integrity. It's a similar concept for force feedback. If you have your force feedback too high, you start hitting a point where you lose feedback and fidelity. And you wanna find that area where you have the maximum strength while keeping that strength and fidelity. In some situations, a little clipping is okay, like if you're driving in real life, but you definitely don't want it to be clipping as soon as you're turning a little bit in. That's why you see people set their force feedback to like 60%, 70%, because you want a bit of that ceiling, so you're not clipping when you are uh, actually steering and going over bumps.
Downside of the classic game, the fanatic, uh, the fanatic wheel like display isn't working in this because this was about this wheel came out about 12 years after the uh, or no 13 years after this game. It can affect lap times. The thing is, it just really doesn't communicate well with what's going on with the car. So if you are clipping, then that means you're losing. Oh, whoa. Okay, that just ripped out my hands. But yeah, you're losing that feedback that can be translated into learning what to do with the car in different situations. Okay, I just overshot that corn. Ah! Okay, something's weird with the force feedback in this. But yeah, so... Uh, yeah, it can affect lap times, but it's more of affecting your ability to understand what the car is doing. So one cool touch, look at the bottom of uh, the screen. You're actually seeing the pet or your feet moving. That's a nice touch. You're actually seeing your foot moving alongside the throttle. But this car, it sounds pretty darn good for a 2004 title. Feels solid. Force feedback. Nothing to write home about. It just... I'm not really getting much feedback through the bumps. Yeah, GTR Evolution. Uh, that's another great title. I'll likely take a look at that one later on because that one actually was based off of, ah, dang it. That one was based off of the race 07 engine, which was on the ISI motor two engine. So the same engine of, uh, as R factor two, but this was definitely where Simbin really established its name for itself. I mean, it was around for a while before because there was the original GTR, which I also have on CD. There was also them doing mods for F1 Challenge. Actually, I'm not even sure if it was F1 Challenge. It might have just been primarily F1 2002. So the title before F1 Challenge. So Simbin, like sec what's now Sector 3, and also like slightly mad studios they have a huge history extending into like the early 2000s and they've done a lot but it's interesting seeing how that split happened uh because ian bell and chris speed i think were the two main names uh on like simbin so chris speed uh, also, Allen Speed, I think. Uh, but yeah, so... Uh, Ian and Chris, I believe, had that split. Or they were like technical part... Ah! Okay, something is up with force feedback, but... I'll tweak it later on. But yeah, so... Yeah, I'm running the Fanatic Club Sport Wheel V2.5. I wonder... Let me try something real quick. I might be running negative force feedback. Hold on. I'm just going to test some settings. But yeah, so Chris Speed and Alan Speed, they uh, worked on Simbin stuff. Ian Bell, I believe, was part of Tentacle Studios. And that uh, became Simbin afterwards, I think. And then uh, there was the split where like, what was formerly Tentacle and Simbin... They left and formed Slightly Mad Studios, so they didn't 
or they did Need for Speed uh, Shift 1 and 2. They did Test Drive Ferrari. And then, uh, right, then what is known now as uh, Project Cars. So, I, I'm still not the biggest fan of Project Cars 2 right now. I'm still saying they are making a lot of positive stuff. It's definitely a solid progression from Project Cars 1. And I think people looking for a solid racing title, they're going to enjoy it. Uh, it. The problem is that when they market it as one of the best Sims of all time, and uh, especially when the community starts uh, jumping in and saying that all other Sims are not real because they're hard and everything that is when things start getting a little sketchy in my book and i gotta say like i've enjoyed my driving in project cars 2 so far to an extent there are still some issues that really need to be resolved Okay, that didn't do a dang thing. Still trying to rip out my hands past lock. But yeah, so... Whoop, 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 drift. And couldn't really say that. Stall the car, let's start it up again. Oh, that starter sound. Oh, come on. So there are obviously a little bit of teething pains with this title. Uh, or maybe not teething pains, but uh, I don't really know how to describe it. TC Mod 2010. Okay, thanks for that heads up. But yeah, this is definitely fun in the Porsche. I gotta say that. But... I mean, single car running is all good and all, but let's try a race in a minute. I know there's also a new firmware update for my wheel, so I should download that soon. But basically, at first, I wanted to get my computer back up and running because... This is the Ryzen system. I sort of had it sitting around for a while. I was waiting some some parts for it. And now I should be able to finally do my uh, AMD versus Intel comparison video. Yes. So I'm going to be gathering data for that. Uh, one thing I will mention is uh, with streaming. So it's not just gameplay, but with streaming. This seems to be... Uh, oh, wait, I'm only streaming at 30 frames per second. I did not realize that. Sorry about that. I'm just using default OBS settings, so I didn't realize I'm streaming at just 30. So, sorry about that. Uh, let me see if I can adjust it real quick. Because I would have liked to have it streaming at 60. So, let's go to... Um... Video. Uh, I will be back in just a minute. I just want to fix that real quick. Yeah, dude, I'm not high. I have not smoked in like two years. I'll be right back. Okay, and it looks like I'm back, and it's at 60 frames per second. Uh, so let's fire this back up again. But yeah, I'm I'm also just doing my testing with the systems to see how it is. <laughs> Ian Bell is my dealer. Huh, interesting. Okay, so let me just check something real quick. So I'm just going to go down to medium. And drop the force speed back down to 50. We'll see how that goes. And wheel effects, okay. So let's leave this event and try going into a race. 
Oh, no, it just crashed. That sucks. Old games for the win. Let's launch it again. Sorry about that. But yeah, if you notice anything on the user interface of this stream right now looking any different, that's because, as mentioned before, I'm on the newer computer. So I don't have all the stream stuff dialed in. And I am right now just using a... Uh, I'm using my... What is it? Uh, one solid state drive. I'm waiting on my four terabyte... A Western Digital Black hard drive to come in for this computer. Then I can also do some more game capture stuff, and I'm going to be planning on doing my review of F1 2017 next week. Actually, no, it might have to be the week after because next weekend is my sister's wedding, and I'm going down to Southern California. So I apologize about the slight delay on my F1 2017 review. Just, oh man, it's been a busy few weeks. So let's go to the race weekend. All right, here's something cool though. A mode for 24 hour races. And this also had dynamic day to night transition. So that was pretty awesome back in the day. And it's still now. Okay, so let's take a look. So let's go to a different track. Let's go to Spa. And then for car, let's go into Viper. Yeah. Ah, it sounds like a good combo. But if I sound like I'm high, A, it might be because my neighbors are potheads, and who knows, I might get a, uh, I might get a secondhand high from them. Or B, it might be down to just uh, me being half awake and going straight from my bed to the computer for the stream. Oh, this is cool. Uh, it has a field of view slider in the interface like this. That's pretty cool. So let's go there. And let's see if we can skip straight to race. Race. Seven laps. Okay. This should go well. I gotta say, the graphics also have held up pretty well. I mean, consider this is a... 12 year old title maybe even 13 years old so i mean look it's pretty decent all things considered just saying my two cents but yeah ahead of its time definitely where we had the day to night transition we have weather and it's sad because in the isi motor 2 engine we didn't have weather and stuff so it's like really Okay, this feels good. Uh, let's skip the formation lap for you guys. Whoa. A little bumping and banging. <laughs> Pretty amazing, though, because this car has such a different feel to that Porsche. A, because it's a front-engine car. B, because it's heavy as heck. But, I mean, look at that power. Because in that street, I just reeled them in, but they're so much more agile through the turns that you really you have to rely on this car's muscle to make the pass. Little bump and run. Come on, come on. There we go. Rubbin's racing, boys. Rubbin's racing. Three wide action. Competition up front. This is getting exciting, boys. And any ladies who might be in the stream. Or who am I kidding? <laughs> I 
Jimmy Broadbent gets all the ladies in his streams. Oh, that backfire I just heard from my engine. That sounded nice. That sounded good. Well, yeah, consider this is just the 1.0 patch. Oh, oh, hey, Mr. Need for Speed. Good to see you in here. Yeah. Uh, so, man, this really ages well. I got to say that. As I completely miss a corner. But it's interesting. Uh, yeah, it's that bandana. That's why he gets all the ladies. It's like me, Gamer Muscle, Sean Cold. We guys who are bald, we just, we don't have that bandana, man. But yeah, Mr. Need for Speed, uh, I sent you a message the other day, uh, just asking your opinion on some stuff, so uh, that's in your YouTube messages, so you can check that out. So I'm in P19. Whoa, 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 understeer. I think I turned off damage. Or wait, no, I think I have. Let me see. <laughs> that was not a good corner, guys. Not a good corner. So I have damage off, I guess. I forgot to turn on damage. And oh man, that Porsche. These cars are coming to their own. So this game was, I don't think it was meant for 1920 by 1080 because it was in 2004. So I think that's why you're seeing a little bit of like that gap in the top left. Yeah, the graphics look pretty darn good. So if you see me glancing over to the right, it's actually because with the way my wheel is set up, I can't see my gear indicator like on my monitor. So I'm looking over on my OBS uh, stream to see what gear I'm in. It's kind of funny. I might have been able to run Fanaleds when I was like on my system, but I don't have it installed yet because it's a new system. Yeah, look below the wheel. So this S's is so much different than what I'm used to. That's why I keep on missing it. So, next turn, make sure I don't miss it. But listen to that backfire, man. Sounds good. Position 13. Shift down. This time I made the corner. Yeah, large llama. What I'm saying, or no, what I'm saying is my line of sight, my physical wheel is literally blocking my gear indicator. So I have to look like that to see the gears. So the rim of my fanatic wheel is literally blocking that spot on the monitor. Yeah, and one of the downsides is striving for that one-to-one -one view, especially when you are in a like, single monitor configuration for streaming and stuff.
Yeah, I could bring up the HUD. Uh, yeah, that crackle. Snap, crackle, pop. And that punch of the gears, like, or not the gear, the backfire. Just makes you like, oh. Sounds like a gunshot coming out of your butt. Going from full throttle to no throttle, it's like, boom. I mean, that's pretty authentic because if you're feathering the throttle, you're not going to have as big a backfire as if you're going like wide open. But yeah, this was a V10 powered engine, if I remember correctly. I hear a couple cars behind me. Uh, Martin, uh, my name is William Marsh. So, of course, the one time I don't put my name in the stream, somebody asks my name. That's funny. Oh, Robert, how was it? Little tight. Oh yeah, MX-5 races can usually be pretty darn fun. Congratulations, Robert. What, what, what? Uh, had a little bit of wheel hop. That sucked, but I had a little wheel off into that corner, got a little over eager, and that unsettled the car enough to make me spin. <sighs> GTRs 2 is still holding up. I mean, just look at the background, look at the scenery. That just looks good in general. I might try reducing the steering degrees of rotation to like 450. This just feels a little too loose. Let's see how 450 feels. Just turn it down to 450. Okay, that's quite a bit better. Little snappier. Oh, dang, I totally... I cut. Little unfair tactic, but uh, we made it work. <laughs> But yeah, like I'm planning on doing an opinion video talking about looking back to see where we can move forward. Because a lot of these classic games are really great. And they implemented a lot of features that they weren't really total simulation stuff, but they added stuff to make things authentic. That's what matters. Yeah, this bus stop is a pain. But yeah, feeling the car get a little squirrely under braking feels nice. And I'm not going to go out and say GTR2 has perfect physics. GTR2 feels a little 
Alright. It does feel kind of like... Uh... Uh, older race room is the best way for me to sum it up where it feels kind of floaty at the same time it feels almost too planted in the rear end so setup might be able to tweak that but it does definitely out of the box for the general racer who doesn't want to spend like hours tweaking a setup it does feel a little too safe in my opinion I'm trying to control God's dog. <laughs> that, that's an epic line. I might have to use that sometime. But yeah, see how far up that I think it's a Lotus is? So let's see if how much I reel it in because of all this horsepower. Well, that lift isn't going to help much. Oh, I actually kind of made the corner. I cut it a bit, but I made the corner. Yeah, this... Uh, it's definitely not laser scanned in 2004, but it's interesting because... I th I think I remember watching the 2004 race at Spa. I don't remember this extended like front area too much. But see how much time I've actually gained on this Lotus right now? Little wide. But yeah, I might actually close in on it in up to next corner. It's getting bigger. I think I'm in second gear right now. I don't have the time to look. Take this in third. Yeah, I'm in third right now. Yeah, this is basically a boat on wheels with a huge engine. People don't drive this for the corner agility. They drive it for the power! Lamborghini. I don't know if that's a car lapping me. Yeah, these cars are lapping me because there would be no way that Ferrari was behind me position-wise. Lock up, lock up. You really do wrestle this car, though. Making a move, passing the grass. Sound side by side. That was a nice pass. That was impressive. <laughs> Wrestling through the grass and passing the car and taking names. Oh, almost got that last spot. Oh, my pit crew chief was so dejected there. <laughs> okay, looks like I have a ways to improve. Gary, I'll take a look at Dirt 4 again later on. I'm hoping they improve patches, so we finished 15th out of 16, guys.
Wow. Our average speed. Yikes. Oh, I was in the lowest class too, so I didn't realize that. So one other thing I want to show you is the driving school. I wish more titles had this. So you learn the basics and everything and how to drive, essentially. So let's take a look. I mean, we'll just start with the basics. Acceleration. I thought there was supposed to be information about how to do this. Okay, I guess the driving school might be glitchy. Yeah, Dirt 4, if, especially for $60, I'd think it's a little like repetitive, redundant. I wish they had more locations and more dynamic tracks. So I guess the driving school is having issues. Note that I'm only running the version 1.0. I haven't loaded the patch that is needed yet. So that could be why. So let's take a look, 24 hours. So you can actually turn it down. So you can have a simulated race, simulated 24 hour race in 24 minutes. We can try that. 35 opponents. Uh. Dirt 4 is not VR compatible yet. So let's take a look at... Uh, let's see. Monza 24 hours? Hockenheim, Imola. Let's try Monza. And we'll do the... Uh, oh, that's the faster Viper of the two, I think. Yeah, so the G3 Viper is slower. The Chrysler Viper GTSR is the GT class. Let's try the BMW. Dirt 4 beats Rally when it comes to value. It depends on what you're looking for. Dirt 4 is definitely mo more cohesive in different disciplines and stuff. They have the off-road trucks. They have the free roam. They have that. Dirt. If you're looking for just rally, uh, you might want to just stick with dirt rally because also it has Pikes Peak. It has some like more, or maybe not more locations, but more dynamic tracks. If you're wanting to try dirt four and it's only five euros more than dirt rally you might want to check it out but for the price that like for a full like 60 us dollar price i can't recommend it but if you can get a reduced price then i can recommend it okay so we're doing a simulated 24 hour race guys so it should get dark i do have headlights mapped so let's see how this race goes. But Monza, oh boy, that first turn, that bus stop, that's going to be intense. Yeah, dirt rallies in VR. I have tested that out. Uh, it's pretty good. Or, oh, 55 euros? No, no, no. Not 55 euros for dirt four. That's my opinion. Your opinion may differ. I'm not huge on Rally, but if you are a huge Rally fan, you might like it. But I just, I didn't really enjoy it enough to say, yeah, I can justify paying $60 for it. Ah, can I skip this? There we go. Skip the formation lap. So 44 people in this race. A 44 car field. Yeah, 44 cars in a 2004 game. That's not a NASCAR game, I should say, too. That is insane. But you can see I'm making passes now because I'm in a faster car. Let's see. Okay, 
this is handling turn one at Monza better than Seto Corsa, better than Project Cars 2. Just think about that. This older game just handled turn one at Monza better than some of the top racing titles of this year. Just put that in perspective. That's how great this game is. And this is a game you can find for like $5 on Steam. I'm not sure if I'd go as far as saying it looks better than Automobilista. Automobilista is still, it looks pretty great, especially in higher resolutions. I'm hoping GTR 3 is good, but I, I'm cautiously optimistic. Uh, one of the nice things is Simbin is working on GTR 3, but the thing is, Monster Games worked on NASCAR Heat and NASCAR Heat Evolution. So, studios can change over the years. Monster Games went from making one of the best NASCAR games around to making Nintendo Wii shovelware games. Think about that. And then made NASCAR games again, and now they're horrible. I mean, I'm hoping that NASCAR Heat 2 is better, but I, I can only hold out so long. Yeah, you could easily enhance the graphics in the drivers, but I'm just, this is just vanilla GTR 2. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Almost locked up. But man, all right, I just got to say, oh, yellow flag sector one, there might have been an incident in turn one, who knows. But yeah, so just think about how it is. Uh, and also, there are ways to unlock Porsche and Ferrari in the Steam versions of GTR 2. I might look into it and see if I can host it in the Sim Racing Paddock forums. Because I believe it's on No Grip Racing, which I haven't touched in years. But I might be able to see if I can re-host it on the SRP forums. So people who want to experiment it or with GTR2 can experience it in all its classic racing glory. Oh, I just realized the Motec display actually shows how much time is left in the race. So we have 20 minutes left. Oh my gosh, that sun glare. That looks good too. But that glare going into the final corner. And you can see it slowly start to get darker. Yeah, I believe I mapped the Motec button. Maybe not. But look, it's getting darker. You can see it. Oh man, oh, wheel hop. So, yeah, you can see the headlights illuminate the track now. Beautiful sunset. The purple hues. I mean, I think Project Cars 2 might have better visual sunsets. But, yeah, this still looks great. Especially considering this is a 2004 game. So, oh, clip, clip the kitty litter. So it should be getting darker soon, but yeah.
So this is going, or simulating like an hour a minute if this is a 24 minute race. Yeah, it looks like the sun's already mostly dropped below the trees now. Uh, I think I have mirrors turned off. That's why there are no reflections. Let me see. Um, nope. There we go. Mirror reflections on. So I just had to hit the button one to activate reflections. Wow. A lot of wheel chatter on the brakes. But yeah, look at behind us, you see the cars behind us, so relatively close racing. But look how dark it's getting. Something else interesting to note that with this uh, BMW, the backfires aren't nearly as loud as what we heard with the uh, with the Viper. Points will be awarded this lap. Huh. I don't fully know what that means. I guess that's FIA rules. But yet, yeah, oh, dang it, into kitty litter. So this guy behind me is going to close in big time. Uh, is that the GTR behind me? Yeah, a guy in a... Or no, that might be Porsche. But yeah, you see the lights illuminating the track. My headlights illuminating. Pro and Master on Dirt 4... Uh, you might have watched the wrong stream, man. But yeah, look how dark it is without the headlights. And then turn it on. Pretty authentic. Awarded two and a half points. <laughs> wow, I overshot, overshot. Warning for kind track, I deserve that. I just totally missed my breaking point there. <laughs> But yeah, it's interesting because as I mentioned before, these cars kind of feel floaty. It might be down to force feedback. So I'll look into newer patches, see if that helps with the forced feedback. Yeah, pole position. I want to do that, like a short video about that too. I have a Raspberry Pi emulator that I might be able to set up. Oh, that tabletop driving. That was, oh, that, that was horrible. I was hunched over driving for two hours and oh man I was sore for like a day because of that like sitting on a Saints Row purple couch with a weird green screen that was always fun good times good times remember Codemasters and Deep Silver do not endorse first degree murder Three D pole position, huh? But yeah, I have a Raspberry Pi emulator that I might run some classic games on, try to get some content for you guys. So I moved my breaking point back to the two hundred, and it felt all right. I might be able to move it a little further. I don't know if I'm bottom of my class or top of my class because I'm keeping these other cars at bay, but everyone is pulling away from me. Ah, uh, the joys of multi-class racing. But let's see how... Yeah, that is dark. Pretty darn dark. 
I should have been more to the right there. Then I could have gotten a better line through that chicane. My guess is I'm last in my class, and that's the next class trying to pass me up. That's my guess. Because I think I have difficulty set too high for this race. But, man, looks like... Uh, look at those stars. I mean, they're not high, high resolution, but still, stars. Nighttime. Dark. So we're halfway through the race. So I'm thinking maybe in a couple minutes the sun's going to start coming up. Don't worry, the wolf. People of all games can definitely uh, enjoy games. Armageddon, darkness. No, it's not exactly Armageddon. It's just Italy. But yeah, these track lights, they look good. I gotta say that. If I was driving this in 2004, A, it would likely kill my computer, and B, I would have just been blown away by these visuals in 2004. I mean, granted, it's not as great as Gran Turismo 4, uh, but still, this just feels great. Later on, I'm planning on trying a stream uh, with Grand Prix Legends, so I think I might be slightly masochistic, but I think that could be a fun experiment. So points awarded this lap. So I guess they award points at like, specified intervals in a race? I think the head movement in this might be a little exaggerated, but this is pretty solid. Yeah, mid-session saves, pretty awesome. GT Sport does not have weather. I think they missed out the Forza there. Yeah, I think weather is something that definitely... I, Developers are seeing as a luxury, but in racing, weather isn't just rain. It's like different tire pressures like acting on different temperature tracks. It's cloud cover, adding more grip, things like that. So, yeah, I think I agree on what you're saying. GPL Preservation Society. Thank you for that heads up. I think I've heard of it before, but I'll look into it a little further. I heard some backfire on the car, but it does sound more in line with what a german engineered v8 engine would sound like not just american high displacement v8 roar well oh, we're coming of a sweat <laughs> Yeah, engine sounds definitely are on point for, like, this era. Definitely still better than Gran Turismo nowadays. Hello, Emmanuel uh, Fogagnoli? Or Fogagnoli? 
nice to meet you. So yeah, looks like it's starting to get a little lighter on this corner, which is, I believe, where the sun would come up. Little wheel hump. Oh yeah, it's partial moon I just saw. I thought they used a Dyson vacuum for the sounds. Uh, Jeremy, I am using the PC uh, DVD version, the physical copy. So this does have uh, Porsche and Ferrari available. You can see me driving the Porsche uh, in the stream. But yeah, I'm thinking, I, I think one of the only places I've seen the GTR2 no CD patch or I, around was the, uh, yeah, was the uh, No Grip Racing website. So I might see if I can rehost it on Sim Racing Paddock. So now it's bright out. Let's turn off the headlights and we're good. Okay, Jeremy. Whoa, little wide, little wide. Okay, we saved it. We might lose a spot now though. Oh, he just hit me. Let's see if I can make the pass. Oh, he cut me a little in there. No, I hit gas too hard on the curb. Yeah, Power and Glory is definitely a great mod. Oh, that hurt, guys. That hurt a bit. We have five minutes to gain two more spots. Oh, that glare. Almost missed my breaking point because of that glare. Yeah, it would be nice to have a VR patch, but apparently there are some utilities that sort of jerry-rig VR to work with uh, DX8, DX9 games. So I might try looking into that. Dang it, I've lost my composure. And I've been lapped. Let's see if we can use this to our advantage. <sighs> Dang it. Lost my composure. But yeah, I've heard of a couple different utilities, so I might look into that. Because just imagine how this would look in VR. We have four minutes left. Yeah, I definitely try not to swear in my streams. I think I've let one or two slip out in the past. Uh, but I try to just keep it more appropriate. And I just, yeah, try to keep it accessible for a wider range of people. I mean, I'm not faulting people who swear. Like Jimmy Broadbent, he does swear at times. And, uh... I still watch his streams, I appreciate what he does, but I'm just not that kind of guy that likes to swear. I find it more funny that if I think of something creative, like, oh, not a butters with fudge!
Dang it. There you go. Yeah, this isn't really a serious race. I mean, uh, I had that league race with the 787B at Spa uh, for the Sim Racing Paddock Sim Racing System Championship where Austin Ognoski, he ended up ramming me off the road, final corner, final lap to steal the win. And I got angry there. But, I mean, that was just hard racing. That was last turn, last lap. What am I going to do? Am I just going to get butt hurt over that? And the thing is, this stream is for you guys. This stream is for fun. This stream is just to goof off. So, who cares if I make a little mistake on the track? It's all for just you guys. It's for the fun of it. I mean, you've seen some of my other races where I'm not doing, like, live streaming or I'm not talking while driving. Uh... Uh, Jeremy Chambers, I am doing a new league with Sim Racing System in Assetto Corsa. Uh, that is going to be featuring the uh, Scuderia Ferrari SF15T Formula One car. So that is going to be one of the new series I'm going to be doing. Uh, that starts next week. I think I'll make one of the races on that next week. Uh, I am going out of town on next Thursday. Uh, and that is going to be uh, for my sister's wedding. Uh, the league is worldwide. It's open to anyone. Just note that it is happening on Tuesdays and Wednesdays at 6 p.m. Pacific time. So... For people in Europe, you're going to have a late night if you want to use that. So the race is at 6 p.m. Pacific time, Tuesdays and Wednesdays. Hello, Rachid uh, Kamliki. I apologize if I got your name wrong, but thank you for the stream. Or thank you for the compliment. Yeah, Jeremy, that would be at 9 o'clock Eastern Time. Whoa, whoa, the AI just flashed me. So, the AI... Oh! Whoops. Definite R-Factor 1 hit sounds. But I locked up the wheels. Uh, but, yeah, this guy in the Ferrari behind me, he just flashed his headlights at me as he was looking to pass. Whoa, 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 oh, oh, whoa, we survived that. <laughs> that reminded me of something Jimmy Bronman had earlier. So the two cars stopped like that and dodged them, yeah. Uh, I don't have much information on the Sim Racing Paddock website right now. If you go to simracingsystem.com, uh, then you can find out info or information about the series. Uh, there's also the Sim Racing System Facebook page, which has a banner uh, talking about it. Or it's, oh, it's Comlicky or something like that. My bad. Uh, the races are going to be 20 minutes long. So they're short races. All right, it's 20 minutes long. I want to say it's like five minute practice, five minute qualifying, 20 minute race or something like that. So that would translate roughly into like uh, 10, 13, 15 lap races, depending on the track. Race finished. That did not go well. <laughs> so.
so quit so we have to scroll down to find us so we finished uh let's see g2 class let's see we finished last in our class of course finish race continue so i wonder if i can change the ai strength to make it a better race for us so race weekend <clears throat> Let's just do no, uh, and then, oh, Rashid Kalnichi, thank you for that, my bad. So, let's do 8 p.m. race, so, or 7 p.m., that should be like late afternoon sunset. And let's go with uh, 2004 GT's cars. So we're we're trimming down the series. So yeah, so Saline, Maserati, Lister, Lamborghini, and Ferrari. Let's try a Ferrari because we can in this. And let's check on tracks. Let's go with Imola another Italian one so realism um, no spin recovery options where the heck is opponent okay let's set it to 87 percent yeah Imola is one of my favorite Italian tracks uh, it's definitely challenging. I always lose out in the first sector. That's my big issue. So this is gonna be a shorter race, but should be fun. Gotta love this Eurobeat music. Fun fact, one of the songs in GTR2 is actually uh, a pre, I'm gonna call it a pre-mix of the main song in project cars so that's fun okay so let's get behind the wheel okay raining a little bit of frame rate start our struggle uh i'd say it's a mix of america and maybe uk But yeah, uh, I'd say mostly America because I am an American and usually cater to American time zones. But Europe definitely does have a strong presence as well. I just realized I don't have wipers mapped. Uh, hold on a second. I want to try something. So I'm going to restart this race. Uh, let me see if I can go back to menu. No, I can't. Okay, here we go. Options, uh, controls. I want to see if there's a windshield wiper button. I can check with the analytics. I believe it is, uh, America though. I believe so. I'm not seeing windshield wipers. That's interesting. It might be just before an era where they had windshield wipers. Or not uh, in cars, but in the sim. Huh. That is weird. I mean, it's not like the... like It's not like it's totally necessary in this, but I just find that interesting. Uh, sim racing history. Gotta love it. They are? I couldn't find it. Second home in the UK. <laughs> yeah, that would be a tough commute. Making some moves. So this is 
also to see if rain handling is different. Maybe confusing with Race 07, who knows. Yeah, this is a, a wider field of view, so it's going to definitely look faster, too. Because I, I can't really get a true one-to-one -one on this without it looking kind of bad for you guys. So... Oh, little contact there. Bigger than Senna's testicle. Interesting. Little wide on that corner. I should have this sequential, but I don't think it's connected right now, unfortunately. How long have I been sim racing? Well... It depends on how you look at it because I got my first sim title back when I was six years old. I got NASCAR Racing 1999 season, except I had no clue what the heck I was doing. Uh, when I first really got into, uh, or when I first really got into sim racing, that would have been around 2007. So. That was with NASCAR Sim Racing. And then I moved to R-Factor 2, NASCAR Racing 2003, and uh, so on. So I've been Sim Racing readily for around, uh, for around 10 years now. Wow, that was an intense pass. That would have not worked in real life. I don't think. I know there's a way to either use a cheat or save file to unlock all cars and tracks, but I'm okay for now. But thanks, Patrick. So rain doesn't seem to affect the grip too much? No, 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 don't, no, don't stall, don't stall. Whoa. I might have spoke too soon. I just really lost the rear end there. So let's take it easy in this corner this time. Yeah, the rain effect in this isn't horrible but it's definitely not great by today's standards but it's passable it it does look like you're, you're having raindrops fall let's just put it that way but yeah it's funny because i still remember when i bought this uh i want to say i was like 15 and i saw it at my local video game store and it's not just gtr2 it was GTR 2 bundled with GT Legends. So it's like $19. I was begging my mom for it. And she gave in and I got it. Uh, so that's how I got GTR 2 and GT Legends. Fun fact. I might have been 14. I'm not sure. It was somewhere around that time frame. Oh. That, sorry, Lambo. Crossover move. Boom. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Really lost the rear end there. Let's pass this Ferrari. Never mind. 
had the door slammed on me. Slow down. Whoa, 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 whoa. Lost it. Caught it. Lost the spawn, I think. Nope. That Lambo decided to back off. Thank you. So actually, yeah. <laughs> Rain is slightly more trickier. Or slightly more tricky, I should say. Proper grammar. You can't just mash the throttle, which is like real life. There, he unsettled under braking. Uh, live stream with you tomorrow. I might be able to find time for that. For those of you who don't know, Patrick is another member of the Sim Racing Paddock team. So, might be able to try a live stream. Just don't go all German on me. I don't know German. <laughs> Dang, it almost had a run on the outside. Except, can make the pass on the inside. There we go. Also, one thing I want to mention. This game, from 2004, supports multiple USB devices. I'm using the Fnatic wheel and the Husingfeld pedals. So, this supports multiple USB devices. When some modern racing games still don't. Wow. Great. Awesome. I am not using the magnetic fanatic paddles right now. Those are on my formula rim. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Overshot, overshot, overshot. Wow, wow, wow. Uh, oh, that hurt. That's what I get for reading while driving. <laughs> I'm just going to guess, uh, I don't even know. Something to do with sim racing. Alright, maybe, hi, I'm William and I love sim racing. That's what I'm going to guess. Because Lieb looks like love. That's what I'm just guessing. <laughs> Uh, favorite tracks. Uh, so favorite race tracks in the United States. I really like Sonoma Raceway, partly because I'm local to it and it's a uh, very technical, a very technical, very tricky track. Uh, I also enjoy like uh, Watkins Glen. Uh, it's a historical U.S. track. Very are very varied in corners uh in the uk donnington park is one of my favorites i also like brands hatch uh germany uh the nurburgring gp circuit i enjoy uh uh oh uh oh uh oh stalled it no i'm in the kitty litter we're out We're getting past. That was not good. But yeah, so those are some of my favorites. I also like Spa. Uh, there are just a lot of tracks I enjoy. And then Emola is one of my favorites, even though I'm sucking right now. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Oh, I hit the curb in the rain and ow. Whoa. Dang it, I sold again. 
Idiots. Idiots are who don't like spa. Or actually, no, I take that back. Uh, the people who live at spa that tried to shut down spa. Except those are idiots too, so... Jeff Kremen Grand Prix. I've done a little bit of Grand Prix 4. I might take an extended look at that later on. Ah, uh, cut. We had a decent race going. Operative word had. Uh, Belgian Grand Prix, I want to check it out. Uh, it might not be where I watch it live. Uh, because of time zones. But I think I can catch the rebroadcast, which is on NBC. But yeah, I don't think I'll be able to catch it live because that's about eight hours ahead. So if it's at like one eight, or it might be eight hours ahead. I forget how many hours ahead Belgium is, but usually broadcasts are like three or four a.m. in the U.S. Boom. Okay, I'm calling it. <laughs> that race went south fast. <laughs> okay, so finished the race. How long was it anyway? Okay, nine hour difference. So yeah, that if the race was at 1 p.m., then that would be like 4 a.m. in the U.S. So it's like, yeah, I don't really feel like waking up that early. So let's do one more race, guys. Let's do one more. And let's try actually to get a good finish here. Excuse me. So let's go with NGT 2004. That should be interesting. So let's go with the Porsche GT3 RSR again. 77 might be a lucky number. All right. Just look at the car model, though. That's pretty darn good for 2004. And full interior cockpit. That's nice. That you can actually look in. <coughs> Gran Turismo. I mean, older Gran Turismo. They didn't have that ability. So, let's take a look at... Um, some of these tracks I just don't know. That's the difficult thing. Um, I don't know Burno or however you pronounce it so let's give that a try let's have some fun yeah i think even monza had noise complaints which is like whoa actually no i don't want rain in this race oh wait donnington okay let's do donnington again see if we can get a good or actually no we didn't do a race at donnington we just did time trial at Donington, so let's just try that out. Um, summary. So it's a 16 minute race, no rain. Let's this time go for the morning. And let's go with 88% aggression. Uh, partial reference to uh, Back to the Future. Once we hit 88 miles an hour, we're going to see some serious bleep. That German intro music. <laughs> no rain in England. It's a miracle. It's a miracle. Someone alert gamer muscle. Yeah, I live about half an hour from Sonoma Raceway and about 20 minutes from a local dirt oval racetrack. Gotta love that. That guitar riff.
and just seeing the full grid and us starting dead last. Let's see if we can actually improve. And I know Donington Park pretty well, so let's try this out. Let's skip that formation lap one more time. Third gear. Oh my gosh, three wide going into the first turn. Intense racing. Still better turn one than in Project Cars. Just saying. Whoa, this car got unsettled. Whoa, I just got my nose chopped a bit. We're in first gear. Let's go in second. I know I'm cutting the track a bit, but I got spun, so... Whoa, whoa! And I got rammed into rear. Insert joke there. A little bump of the Porsche. We're in third gear right now. We should be able to handle this next corner in third as well. Actually, no, I'm a little too slow. Let's take it in second. But that glare. Let's try to make a move on 57. Oh! There was a yellow flag, so everyone came to a standstill. Dang it. <laughs> I have damage off, though, because... Yeah. That Ferrari looks nice in my rear view mirror. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> okay, that was some um, vehicular manslaughter. Let's try that race again. I got distracted by that Ferrari. <laughs> One more go. Yeah, the default brake bias is a little painful. Actually, let's go. Let's do the formation lap this time around. Because one formation lap in the stream is not going to hurt us. Get some heat into the tires. I'd say this is almost better than a set of AI. Warming up the brakes. Oh, yeah. I might try to see if I can get the UI on. So, three, four, five. Nope. No UI there. I accidentally hit the... Oh, so there are buttons on this where you can communicate with your crew chief. That's pretty cool. I didn't realize that. I can cycle the Motec, but my rim blocks my view of the Motec right now. That's the frustrating thing. But yes, there is a button to cycle the Motec. I just don't have it mapped. Look at that sun. Yeah, break a bit too early. Okay. Thanks for the heads up. I have my own crew, guys. You guys are my crew. <laughs> You're part of the Sim Racing Paddock team. Warm up the brakes. Drive like a granny, okay. Why are all these young whippersnappers just driving on the track? 
The problem with being a spotter in chat is I don't get the messages until like, I think five seconds later. So that's the dangerous thing. Drift. <laughs> okay, that was pretty cool. Did you see that? Wait, hold on. Oh, did I stall it? Slight glitch. My Motec is stuck. My Motec screen is stuck. It's stuck in second gear. Oh, now it's good. Okay. We're good, but now we're behind. Underdog. Let's see if we can close in on these guys. We got some heat in our tires and brakes, so that should go well. Yeah, I'm a little pro preoccupied, so I can't really adjust the field of view right now, but thanks for the info. Making a move. Woo! Yeah, this field of view is great for you guys. Uh, might not be perfect for me, but hey, this stream's not about me. It's about you guys enjoying and sim racing history. Second gear, maybe first. Side by act, side action. Oh, that guy bumped that Porsche. These guys are aggressive. Come on, Ravenous Beast. It partly is. This is already 12 years old, man. That's old in gaming years. This is like as old as Half-Life 2. Except in this game, you can't beat the guys with the crowbar if they bump you off the road. I believe you can use your CD key uh, to unlock Steam. Whoa, 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 whoops, my bad. Making a move. Whoa, 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 whoa. I accidentally caught first gear that spun me out. I meant to stay in second. My bad. Roman's racing. Second gear. Okay, we're good. Making moves, taking names. Oh, I ran him off the track, my bad. This is all for fun. I'm going Jimmy Punterino, guys. 
I'm not sure if you can still go online with this. Uh... Whoa, he, or he had some oversteer and I just, I couldn't slow down in time. You saw that. So they make their own mistakes too. Whoa. Oh, oh, dang it. Yeah, I had nowhere to go there. Yeah, classic race and for the win, guys. Oh, I need to get some lunch after this stream. <laughs> what the? It's already 145? How long have I been streaming? Yeah, this definitely is a solid, full-fledged game and a simulator at the same time. A lot of titles don't do that well. Uh, it's either just a simulator or just a game. Just, yeah. Just think about that. I got the door shut on me, but in the grass, okay, we're good, we're good, make the pass on the outside. Yeah, Project Cars is also like a full-fledged uh, game on top of the realistic driving elements, but there are just other things that hold it back. <laughs> oh, stop and go penalty. Dang it. Yeah, I just get frustrated when I hear about like some of the stuff Slightly Mad Studios is doing. Because like they basically killed off a virtual R. They've paid off pretend race cars, and it's like, you've got to be kidding me. This is not what I signed up for in terms of being a sim racing journalist my goal my philosophy for reviews is to be objective to be that guy that is uh that isn't influenced externally really and seeing like prc seeing virtual r and other companies just doing what they're doing now it's ah it's Borderline infuriating. Also, okay, just think about this. Actual pit crews. Like, they're not really doing anything, but they're actually there. Uh, Gonzalo, this game, I believe, was initially released in 2004 or 2000. Uh, 2006? Okay, my bad. Still a great game for the time. So, I think it's unlikely I'm going to catch these guys now with that stop and go. Going to take a miracle, but it is not raining in Britain, so it might be a miracle. So we got seven minutes. We can see if we can close in on these guys. I find it unlikely, but stranger things have happened. 
Force feedback is almost non-existent in this. It that's dang it. The race director has given you a warning for cutting the track. Keep between the white For lines. crying out loud. I just locked up the rear brakes there and it just sent me for a ride. But yeah, so uh force feedback is not good. Force feedback has issues. Uh Ah, oh, Sean's stream got cut. I warned him. I warned him he has to keep from showing the cut scenes. And that F1 logo or else you're going to get flagged. That's what happened to me. And I am still disputing. Because technically it falls under fair use. As well as I got permission to showcase it. Uh, Codemaster said they're going to work to try to get my streams back up and running but it was frustrating but yeah so i gotta figure out how to get this forward feedback or how to get this force feedback working properly but for this i barely feel anything i don't feel anything over the curbs i don't feel anything like on what the track's doing i just feel some uh resistance so maybe there's like a third party patch to get it working properly with Fnatic wheels. But yeah, going over the grass, I don't feel a thing. Going over the curbs, I don't feel a thing. It That's the one gripe I have with this. You do feel like the cars wait a little bit, but I didn't feel it in full. I didn't feel it in medium. That's a like frustrating thing. Uh, feels real for GTR 2. I'll make a note of that. So, five minutes left in the race. Drift! Spin. Couldn't save it. Oh, yeah, because if I had force feedback, I think I'd have a better chance of saving that spin. But I just... I don't get anything communicated. Come on! But it could be something because of my driver, too, because I just installed the driver and everything for this wheel. It could be that, too, because I just did a fresh install of Windows on this computer. So that could also be a reason why it's struggling. So I'll try to get down to the bottom of it, and I'll let you guys know. Because if you have Knack Wheel, I would like to recommend this, but nothing. Yeah, I have a fresh Windows install on a new solid state drive, so that's nice. Yeah, I'll look in the GTR Evolution as well, see if that improved anything. But yeah, uh, that's on the ISI Motor 2 engine, so maybe. This is just so much fun, though. Yeah, I would assume it has better force feedback because it's on a newer game engine. And also, one of the nice things with the race games is they have a better track selection, which is awesome. Because they have the Nurburgring, they have the Nordschleife. Uh, I can't remember much of the other tracks off the top of my head, but 
it's a great selection. Huh, I could have sworn it was ISI's version. Because I don't even think the lizard engine involved, like, the lizard engine engine, like, existed back then. I don't think the lizard engine was around until about 2010. Best track period. Oh, that is so tricky. Uh,. Do you mean in terms of racing or driving? Because in my mind, a track for driving and a track for racing is two different things. Because in terms of a track for driving, I'd say the Norchlight. Because it has a huge variety of corners. And it's a challenge for a driver. For racing... I might have to go with Spa. Uh, Spa has the variety of corners but is also wide enough to race on so with all that variety of corners it has the high speed corners it has that uh, i want to say it's a double or even a maybe a triple apex corner so uh i would recommend spa as a great racing track because it has the high speed corners, it has medium speed, it has slow speed. So yeah, those are just my two cents on the matter. Fortunately, didn't catch any of the cars, so that was that stop and go killed me. Locked up the rear tires and it just got sent on the ride. Bathurst is a great track. I just, I don't feel it's the best for racing. Driving on it is a blast. That's my thought on it. But in terms of the actual racing, that downhill section is extremely tight. And it's like half the track is a driver's track. And then... Or no, two-thirds, maybe four-fifths of it is a driver's track. The other portion is a racing track where that big draft you can really make a move on. So, Bathurst is a great track. It's just not my favorite for racing. GTR 2, I really do enjoy. Uh, if I get this force feedback dialed in, I would I want to do more content on it. But... Without the force feedback, it's a little tricky. So looking into that, I might try to uh, figure out how to make it more accessible to people. Because this is a great period in sim racing history. I like to say that 2002 to maybe like 2009 was almost like a golden age of sim racing for a while. Because we had NASCAR Racing 2003 season. We had... Uh, NASCAR Heat, or NASCAR Heat to, to Dirt to Daytona as well was pretty solid, even though that was console exclusive. Uh, we had Grand Prix 4, we had Richard Burns Rally, we had, uh, not, or we had F1 Challenge 99 through 02, we had uh, R Factor, we had Live for Speed, we had NetCar Pro, we had all of these excellent titles. I mean, the ones we have now are pretty good, too. They're definitely technologically more advanced. But there's just something about those older titles. Richard Burns Rally, GTR 2, uh, GT Legends. Uh, we had that 2004 revival of uh, Grand Prix Legends. We had all of that. And those were excellent racing simulators. I really enjoy those. Those were a blast. Uh but yeah, those are my thoughts on the matter. Uh, 
your mileage may vary. You might think, oh yeah, nothing but the newest, but there's a beauty in these classic titles, and I really, really enjoy them. So that's why I'm doing the series. That's why I'm doing more classic series, and I hope you enjoy them. I hope you enjoy these classic titles. So I would love suggestions on what else to do in the comments. Maybe after the stream ends, you can comment what titles you like. I'll do a thread in the Sim Racing Paddock forums about it, but for now, this was my like retrospective look on GTR 2. I really hope you enjoy. I might try another stream later tonight. I might be a little busy though, but I'll keep you posted. And thank you for watching, guys. It's always fun to reminisce on the history on sim race of sim racing. So for the sim racing paddock, I'm William Marsh, and you have a great rest of your day.